hello there and welcome back to another review. So we're going to be looking today at Terror of Mecha Godzilla, which is the last movie from sort of the Showa era um, of the Godzilla movies. Um, and if you have picked up the Criterion box set, the one that I'm sort of reviewing these films from, so let me know what you think of it. What's your favourite movie from the box set? Um, had you seen the Godzilla movies before if you have picked it up? Um, so it's been a long time coming, but we finally got to the end of the... Like I said, we'll get around to doing the other Godzilla movies, but we've got to the end of the Showa era today. This was the last film that Ishiro Honda directed as he chose to retire after this one, or rather he was actually sort of retired anyway at this point. Um having grown tired of where the franchise was going, made in 1975, uh, I believe this was made. And whilst the film yet again does the whole alien thing, which we'd have, uh, you know, it's tried and tested, they've done the aliens before, where Honda really goes out with a bang here is on the fight scenes, but we will be, all, like, we'll be getting into all of that over the course of the review. Jun Fukuda directed many of the Godzilla movies. Um, I think may have been offered to direct this, but I think he declined. But to be honest, it's only fitting, I think, that Honda directed this movie, like the guy who directed the original movie. And it's sort of, you know, bringing the guy who sort of done the original, bringing him back in. Um, yes, the film is campy. Yes, it is gimmicky. Yes, we get aliens. But it's almost done, it's almost downplayed uh, sort of way. The plot is as ridiculous as ever. But we do get a great depiction and a great sense, as I mentioned in the battle scenes, as well as the music score, that when these movies are good, when, these, when everything's on form, when these films work and everything is in place and everything, you know, the fights are good, the monsters are, you know, you've got the good monsters there, the plot is okay, silly, but it's fun nonetheless. When that all comes together and it works, it works really well. But as I say, we, we get... These movies are amazingly... When they're done well, they, they're, you know, they're really good fun. None of this countryside battles here. No giant robot men. No flying drop kits. Godzilla, yes, yeah, still having that light-hearted vibe. He's very much serious in this one. On top of that, we get a love story. We get cyborgs. And in my opinion, it's a lot better than the previous movie. I think Terror exceeds Versus. Um, because it's basically, in a way, sort of picking up where things left off. But doing it in a really cool way. Um, I think I think Terror is better than Versus um, Mecha Godzilla. Um I enjoyed it a lot. I was really, you know, tapping into recapturing what made Godzilla great. Even if not by much, it still does knock on the door of why these films are awesome. And as I mentioned in my previous review, Mecha Godzilla has become so synonymous, like synonymous with with the franchise. You can't really argue with that. Of course, it was around another decade before we got another Godzilla movie. But let's get into this one today and see how well the end uh, to the Showa era holds up. So we start with a big explosion right in your face. Pow! Right big explosion right there the terror of mecha godzilla we start the montage of the last film over the credits we meet this team who are on like a submarine and after the remains of mecha godzilla following on from the last movie and it's quite in that respect it's quite cool because in it's almost like you could say it's almost a two-parter um like the fact is and i do love movies i love any sequel where they pick up exactly from where the like the previous movie you know was where it ended Meanwhile, you have this woman on the shoreline staring into the distance. We have no idea who she is at this moment. So the sub finds the wreckage and has gone, and like, like the wreckage of Mechagodzilla has gone. And this giant sea monster attacks them on a transmission from the sub. They say it was a dinosaur that attacked them. Then we have these two meeting in the hotel room saying they are a superior species and want to rebuild Tokyo as their planet is coming to an end. The film in many ways does sort of semi-pick up, like I mentioned, where the last one ended. We don't get no monkey faces in this one. We learn of this Dr. Mafuni who went quite mad and seen and had discovered the, the dinosaur much earlier and called it Titanosaurus. Um... We then meet our marine biologist, uh, Ichinosen, who is investigating the submarine disappearance and goes looking for the doctor slash professor. There's always a doctor or a professor or something of that ilk in these movies, isn't there? there there's, always, there's always a guy who is the doctor or the professor. I guess because he knows, they, they go looking for him because I guess because he knows about dinosaurs or something. We also have Murakoshi who teams up with our marine biologist and goes to the house of the doctor and they meet his daughter Katsura and she sends them packing basically. She sends them off um, saying her father is dead. It turns out that Mifune is being backed up by the aliens and he's doing his research in the secret lab in his house and doesn't want to help humans. There's, basically they gave him a bit of a bad deal. They, like, they didn't like his ideas, they didn't like what he was doing so he's teamed up with the aliens now he's like you know right 
you know, that humans didn't listen to me, so he's basically having a sulk. This guy's just sulking. So one of the alien dudes takes him and his daughter to their base in the cave, much like the previous movie. They show him their rebuilt Mecha Godzilla and reveal they are life flow from Black Hole Number Three, as I mentioned. The Black Hole Number Three, of course, as we all know, that's where evil people are from. That's where evil alien. As I mentioned, we all know Black Hole Number Three is the worst of all the black holes. The whole reason they want, like Mafuni, is for this control technology that he has created. Um, for no reason, we have a scene of the sub-captain escaping from the base and getting shot by the aliens in, like, in cold blood. Um, thought the sub, I thought the sub, though, got ripped apart. Why, like, why did you keep him alive anyway? Why did you keep the submarine captain alive anyway? Like, they have a, he's been in the base, he escapes, and then they just... I don't know what they were keeping him for uh, at this point. So our good guys find out that one of Masun, in one of Masuni's books in their archive, and Ichin as he goes to meet his daughter... He's like, come on, we are building a new sub to go and look for the dinosaur. Come with us. Right? He's like sort of saying, well, you know, we're going to go look for the dinosaur. It's like, you do know the last submarine that went down there got absolutely smashed and ripped to pieces, right? You know, I'd, I wouldn't blame anybody for not being full on board for this excursion, for this little exposition that, like, you know, ex position that we're doing like for this trip down in the ocean layer it's like the last submarine got absolutely annihilated i might give that a miss we learn the sub captain gave this guy a piece of space titanium as he left the base and told him to contact interpol that was the whole purpose of that scene basically is get of him getting shot special mention should also go to the aliens helmets i won't say too much but let's just say they are some damn serious helmets they got going on um that's all i'm going to say about that then we get a curveball learning that katsura actually died during one of her dad's experiments which is probably one of the most over-the-top deaths you will ever see and she was sort of brought back to life by the aliens and has that whole cyborg she's got sort of a robocop thing going on they sort of like use her to control things anyway the sub is on the hunt now as to what happened. They learn that the Titanosaurus doesn't like sonic waves from their sonar. Ichinosa gets ambushed by the aliens, but Murakoshi saves him. Have to love the evil commander who thinks it's fair to whip his staff for letting the captain get away. Slight, I mean, slightly over the top. Um, like the fact he actually uses violence to whip his, his people. As I say, bit OTT. So the Doctor's daughter goes on a date with Ichinose, which lasts all about 20 seconds. These two go on a date with the marine biologist learnt about 20 seconds like serious i thought this scene was going to mount to much more but it's, it's sort of over before it even starts right that you thought it was going to that this was going to expand the plot something was going to happen here nothing actually does it, it's just it starts then it sort of ends and suddenly she's right back at the lab so titanosaurus comes ashore and all the wire like wires like all why so the good guys knew sonar advice had been cut what is great about this scene is that you do get the the masses running you do you know like i mentioned in a few of the other movies you don't often see normal bystanders just general people of the public like sort of running or fearful of these monsters sometimes it just focuses on three or four like our main protagonists and that is it they're the only people in the film but here in terror of mecha godzilla they do make a point that you know we do see the masses running you do see many people from the street running and panicking okay not many you don't see many granted but the fact they still gives it you know they try to give off that scent of mass panic and terror something that the last few movies have been lacking it seems no one is around all buildings are empty and only about like i mentioned three to four people are actually there seeing what is happening between these giant monsters that are doing battle here honda really does try to recapture i think i think there's a, a strong effort being made a real strong effort being made to sort of recapture like what you know happened before the sense where like that where people be scared and frightened you even get to Tannosaurus doing like a basketball style jump to take out some fighter jets at one point also we get building destruction done really amazingly well and the, the pyrotechnics are amazing in this movie and you have to love how Godzilla saps in with his breath from off screen the way he emerges from the darkness too which I think was quite cool I love it when they do that they've done it in a couple of, I think they do it in Hedera as well but when you know Godzilla's coming but they don't reveal him you see the atomic breath come in from off camera and like I say, he, the way he emerges from the darkness in this movie is quite cool. Like, what he's, with, I always got the feeling like with this, Honda is trying to like give his creation the biggest and best entrance he can. And in terms of entrances and the way Godzilla makes his appearance in this movie, it's quite cool. 
Katsura gets shot by Interpol and falls off a cliff as it was her it was her that sabotaged the device that the device then we get a scene that was cut from some version with the aliens operating her with some well let's just say she's got some very suspicious fake looking breasts going on um it was as i said this scene was cut out of some versions um but you know is what it is mafuni says he would do as the aliens say the aliens plan to blow up the base and put the controls to mecha godzilla inside his daughter as she knows that gets taken hostage and meets the doctor and they basically they launch Mecha Godzilla, right? This is what they do. He flies, so it sort of flies out the base. And um, see, she knows he always has respect for the Doctor and his work, and he's like falling in love with his cyborg daughter. Um, yeah, this is what's going on with this movie. Like he's falling in love with his cyborg daughter. Uh, Murakoshi frees some people as the base blows up. Titanosaurus gets activated too. I can't stress uh, when I'm talking about pyrotechnics and explosions. I can't stress how good they are in this movie, and uh, especially when Mecha Godzilla is going to like town and like with the buildings and things like that there's a lot of explosions here and it really does look good and as i've mentioned when it when miniatures and all that is done really well and they the miniatures are good and they've got explosions and the destruction and you know and it really in miniatures can when they're done well look amazingly good i mean he blows the crap out of them probably one of the best set pieces you will ever see in a godzilla, godzilla movie from this era Titanosaurus using his tail to create like some strong winds and what I love too is that he's done serious with that great music score that the campiness and comedy is kept very much on the down low the campiness and comedy is still there but this film for the most part is played the way they're going about it and the way it's done it is relatively you could say serious um, it's just a massive step up from some of the previous movies not in terms of plot but just the overall feel and look of the movie and I think there was a very strong conscious decision there to try and do things like that like I mentioned even doing things like just having shots of like innocent bystanders running in the street and I love that Godzilla takes a running shoulder charge at Titanosaurus and you also get the great camera movement with it panning low as you see them facing off against each other only to reveal like Mecha there's a wonderful shot where you, they sort of the camera pans round they're sort of squaring off and then it pans round and then it, you see Mecha Godzilla it's just like just way like behind Titanosaur. I mean, I can't stress how epic this fight is. I mean, even the falls are done so well. It really does show what can be done when these films really do take care and up their game. Much like the dam sequence, if you recall, in Megalon. It shows how good it can be. And I love how Mecha Godzilla is just standing there the whole time, like the master letting his student fight first. It's almost like a kung fu movie, like sort of like Mecha Godzilla's like the the big hard dude and he's just like letting his student do battle first. So Interpol mend the sonar device and how now they get into Titanosaurus with the bazooka from a helicopter, right? They get they get into Titanosaurus work like with a bazooka from a helicopter. Love as well how Godzilla dusts himself off when he emerges after sort of being buried and just goes off that hope. Nope, didn't feel a thing, you know, which I thought was quite funny. So after pointing the gun at Ichinose, Katsura gets shot by Interpol and, Interpol and he's like, may, you may be a cyborg, but I still love you. Like, he's in love with this robot. Like, say, so this professor's daughter, she's a cyborg. She died, but she's been brought back as, like, I say, it's the whole Robocop thing. But he's like, I don't care if you're a robot. You know, I still love you anyway, but I still love you. The Doctor also gets shot by Murakoshi. I mean, okay, the idea of their romance is quite silly, um, it probably didn't need that in the movie. I think they could have easily gone without that. Uh, but it does have some weight in that she must die, so Mecha Godzilla dies, and for that alone, it does carry some, some, like a bit of substance because, like, sort of, she's the control, and like killing her means Mecha Godzilla will perish as well. Like, to defeat him, I must die too. She shoots herself. Then to wrap the film up, we have what I think is a beautiful f shot as to when, like, the, it's a wonderful, when you say that this is the end of the, like, the era in terms of, like, the Showa era, there's a, one, a beautiful shot, you know, with Godzilla on this orange sunlit ocean walking off into the distance. And I think it's a lovely little um, scene, a, like, a great end shot um, to that movie. And it's almost like the perfect end shot in a way, not the perfect end, um, but a, a great end shot, um, not nice end to the show here. I really hope 
that, as I say, I will get round to um, finding time uh, to do all the other movies. But we got through the first 15 of the Shower Era movies. So I've got so many movies to get through. So if you look on my channel, there's everything. There's Kung Fu movies, Hong Kong movies, Japanese movies, you name it. But I will try and get through like reviewing some of the more old school sort of kaiju movies. I will try and get around to reviewing like the original Mothra movie as well. And there's a lot, lot to get through. So thank you for joining me on this Godzilla journey. We've got through the first 15 and no doubt there will be more uh, Godzilla movies to come. So thank you very much indeed for watching. Hope you enjoyed the review. I'll see you again soon. Don't concentrate on the finger or you will miss all that heavenly glory.